Hey guys, what's going on? Moth Marauder here, and welcome back to another edition of my figure review series. For today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Deluxe Class Ironhide figure from the Transformers Siege War for Cybertron trilogy toy line, and as well as the Netflix uh, series based on said toy line. So yeah, as usual, let's start off with the vehicle form. Now, as you can see, Ironhide here transforms into what I would assume is an ambulance, judging by the windows in the back. So yeah. And um, well, honestly, there's not really much that can be said about his vehicle form other than, you know, it's a red ambulance and all that. Um, here's the lights in the front. I don't know what the fuck these are supposed to be. I don't know if there are supposed to be additional lights like the ones on the top. Or if they're supposed to be blasters for his vehicle form, but I don't know. Um, you have some yellow gold stripes on the side there. And there's the wheels. And there's the bottom. Here's the top. Here's the back. Has Ironhide's feet sticking out. Looks fucking weird in my opinion, but that's just me. So that's pretty much it. Um... For his vehicle form, there's nothing much else that could be said about it, in my opinion. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at his robot form now. And there he is in robot form. So, yeah. Let's take a look now. As you can see, well, when it comes to accuracy, not only is this accurate to the Netflix Transformers show, but it's also very damn accurate to his G1 counterpart. Which, not gonna lie... I think that's what they might have been going for, but who, who knows? But yeah, he's accurate, like I said, to both the Netflix show and uh, the G1 cartoon. So yeah, as you can see, he's obviously red. Um, he's all blocky, like the G1 uh, Transformers were like. And um, when it comes to detail, well, like I said, it's very damn accurate. And... Um, it's really um, nice when it comes to, like, sculpt and carving and all that. Let me see here. So you can see there's a lot of detail on, you know, the chest, um, if you can see it. Like, if you can see it, um, well, I'm not sure if you can, but, if, but um, well, there's uh, these markings and all that. And there's also markings on the arms and the hands the shoulders, there's his face right there, and there's that, there's this fin thing here on the top, which, not gonna lie, now that I think about it, it reminds me a lot of, uh, the fin on Ultraman Ace, I don't know, that's just me, that's what, it, that's what it looks like, honestly, I think of the fin on Ultraman Ace's head whenever, uh, I see this, honestly, so, yeah, like, that's, like, god damn it. Like I said, that's a, what it reminds me of. It's nicely detailed on the feet, especially the bottom of the feet. It's nicely detailed. Let's see here. Here's the back. Very nicely detailed. Uh, there's the tires there. There's those uh, weird-ass blaster-looking things on his back. I still don't know what the fuck those are supposed to be. But yeah. Oh, here's the other tires, too. So yeah, um, detail, damn it. detail and well, sculpt is really nice and impressive, and accuracy as well is really accurate too. Uh, both of those shows I mentioned, the Netflix one that this is based off of, and the G1 Transformers. But anyways, let's move on to articulation. Being a Transformers figure, he has a fuckload of articulation. Arms move 360. Like that. Also, you can also uh, move up and down like that. The elbows move. And uh, the fists don't really move that much. It might seem like it, but they don't move that much. The legs move up and down. They bend at the knees. The feet can move in and out like that. Uh, these things fold up and down in order to turn to his vehicle form. God damn it. And 
they can also pop off really easily. Don't worry, I didn't break the don't worry, I didn't break it. It's just these things tend to pop off very easily for some reason. It's freaking weird. Oh, and uh, the head moves 360. And his uh, chest thing here opens and closes. That way you can get him into vehicle form, you know. So that's pretty much it for articulation. He has a lot. He has a Transformers figure after all, obviously. <clears throat> Oh, and I forgot, he comes with an accessory. Here it is. As you can see, it's some type of uh, missile launcher, I think, because you have these things in the front there. Oh, and it can also turn into some type of uh, sledgehammer or something. I don't know, some type of uh, hammer that you'd use in combat. This is what he looks like, or you can actually uh, equip it like that. Here's what he looks like with the hammer thing equipped. So yeah, it's ready to kick some Decepticon ass. So, or you can have him hold it like this. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the accessory. It's pretty neat, honestly, not gonna lie. There we go, fucking thing. Anyways, um, now that we have articulation out of the way, let's go ahead and compare him with some other figures, just to show how big this figure is. Or at least show you guys how, um, well, at least show you guys the size of this figure. All right. Let's pair him up with Optimus Prime. This is pretty accurate, you know. Optimus is pretty damn tall. I mean, not jet fire tall, but still. Should, Optimus should be taller. And he obviously is, so yeah, this is fairly accurate. Pretty good accurate to both Netflix and G1. So yeah. And just for the hell of it, let's compare this iron hide to the live action iron hide so yeah i don't know about you guys but i find the live action iron hide to be a thousand times more badass in my opinion i mean i'm not saying this one sucks or anything it doesn't he's pretty cool on his own but compared to live action iron hide well live action iron hide is a lot cooler in my opinion a lot cooler a lot more badass love the black painting on him and all that's really cool so yeah just just thought i'd show you a comparison between the two and that's pretty much it for uh, sizing so yeah anyways last but not least rarity um ironhide should be pretty common to find or easy to find um if you can't find him in any of your local stores, I, of course, would recommend you finding him on Amazon. So, yeah. <coughs> uh, there's also another version of Ironhide here, but instead of uh, being the Siege Ironhide figure, which is the one I'm reviewing, there's a uh, Earthrise version of Ironhide in which his vehicle form uh, looks a lot like a Earth vehicle rather than a weird ass blocky cybertronian vehicle that if that makes any fucking sense but yeah the earthrise transformers have earth looking vehicles hence the name i would assume but yeah so that's pretty much it for this review uh detail is really nice when it comes to sculpt he's very accurate to how he looks on the netflix tv show and the g1 cartoon he has a lot of articulation and for rarity, he should be pretty common to find. If not, um, well, like I said, you can always find him on, a on Amazon if you can't find him at any of your local stores. So that's pretty much it. <coughs>
in the end, I would have to give Ironhide a... Hmm. Well, honestly, I don't see any real flaws with this figure, so I guess I would have to give him a 5 out of 5. So, yeah. Overall, it's a pretty nice figure of Ironhide. I mean, like I said, live-action version's cooler, but this design of Ironhide on, on its own is pretty cool, if you ask me. The red on him looks neat. So that's pretty much it. I really hope you enjoy this video and review, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.